Now look, if I show you this, what is your emotional reaction? This to me is potentially a very marketable product. You could ch chop this up, package it nicely. I'm sure it's full of flavour and you could sell it to the French. I mean, they'll buy anything, right? Is that right? Jean-Christophe. <laughs> Jean-Christophe. <laughs> Uh, Did you, do you know much about food? <laughs> if this was, if, is there any way you could package that, that would, uh, that would get your sort of culinary erogenous zones going? This is anything except cheese. I mean, I'm, I'm actually quite sorry because, for you, because there is so much product, so many people there in UK, farmers and, and so on, who could have delivered you the, the best ingredients for cheaper than that. You've picked up on one product line here. We had, we had a spread of products. We had, we had really high quality sausages, fantastic so chutneys, and, and this, this was just one part of our product range. You know, we, we, we had everything. Yeah. You made the decision on the cheap cheese. Let's see, uh, let's see how it unfolded on the program. I was just quite sort of tempted to buy a bulk load of reasonable cheese. And I was looking through the suppliers. Macro is quite close. Paul, don't you think you're making an absolutely massive mistake going to somewhere like Macro to get stuff? <laughs> We've just bought the cheese and it was about 208 pounds for 30 kilograms of cheese. You had 16 kilos of cheese left over after the market session. Bloody great big ugly things wrapped in, in polythene. You bought it from a bloody cash and carry. Nick, you were resolutely unimpressed all yeah. day, it seemed to me. Uh, it's the wrong product. You don't take cheese to France. I was in a supermarket in France, thinking about you, Paul, on Saturday. They had three cheese counters, and do you know the total length of the cheese counters was 41 metres. <laughs> there were more than 200 cheeses. How many and cheeses the, did they have? How many I cheeses? couldn't find one. Well, the, Indeed, there's, there's, there's a gap the opportunity. in the market. No, there's a gap listen, in the market. They've got that's 400 of their own yeah, cheeses to worry about. about they're not waiting for you to pull up with a lump of cheddar. You know, I, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm trying to get out there and do something that people didn't aren't work. doing. It, it didn't. I, I, I took a risk. I Wrong. took a gamble. Yeah. Yeah. A Japanese whiskey salesman landing in the mull of Kintyre would have had more chance than you did taking this. Well, I sold half my product. I can tell how sceptical you are by how high you raise your eyebrows, Mick. And <laughs> at one stage here, you raised your eyebrows so high, they nearly came off the top of your head, like in a cartoon. Look. <laughs> you do yourself an injury raising them like that. I'm, uh, I'm sure you will. Do you want to have the last word on cheese, Jane? Uh, totally the wrong decision. Wrong product to sell. The French, as Christina might put it, aren't Egypt. And uh, they're not going to buy that kind of cheese I mean, farmers markets in Britain wouldn't sell that kind of cheese either. It just was totally the wrong decision, and you made it, and you can't have selective memory syndrome when you're on a television show. You lost Sir Alan's money, and... Uh, he doesn't like that, apparently. He doesn't like he that, apparently. He's got million. You're picking up on why, that, are you? Let's see what you have to say about, about the next issue, which is that flipping cooking device. Get your, your can of beans. Make sure you've got a few, few vent holes in the top and in the, in the bottom, which you can stab through. Over on top of that, set that alight, stick that in there, and then put your frying pan on top and cook yeah. your sausages. Perfect. But the world's most negative man, you needed him to be negative, and he says, perfect. Adam said it was perfect, but he, he was soon thinking it was anything but perfect when he started actually trying to cook with the flaming thing, and uh, he was having some very negative thoughts then. He's struggling away, and it just didn't heat up, did it? Did I want to put the salt, if you know? It's prêt en 10 minutes. let your nemesis in to come in and save the day. It's a total bloody joke. It browned it off, and I did, I did shave some of the brown off. I don't think it did. did honestly, I think, I think it, it was nowhere near cooking. I mean, it's something you learnt on the Brecon Beacons on some sort of survival course. No, it isn't. It, it was just something I, I cobbled together. Certainly that. Listen, I want, I, want you, I want you all to applaud rapturously when you see what's under here. I must admit, I assumed the same thing as Nick, that this was what you do in an emergency at the top of the Brecon Beacons or, 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 or somewhere worse. But what was the background to this? Um, I was trying to find a burner in Macro, and the closest thing they had were these sort of jelly burners which, which heat things at dinner parties, basically. So, so using my entertainment background, I thought, yeah, we'll, we'll put one of those together and, and cook some okay. sausages. So, ever seen anything like that before? When I was in the army, we used to do something very similar. 
But instead of putting the food, we actually put a lid first. Make sure the pan heat up correctly, and then you put the food in. In fact, I'll tell you something. I know that area very, very well. I was born there. Coincidence, nostalgic. In fact, when I was 14, I used to sell pancakes on that market. And you know what? I was very, very, very popular. Right. And that day I decided to be a chef. Was that about your looks or your pancakes? <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> so, Jane. The sausages, in a way, were the best product that you had yeah. because they, they looked fantastic. The, the chutney is the popular too, but, but the sausage yeah. and chutney yeah, is the best. But the problem is, food. when you're buying something and having to sell it on a market like that, if you have to cook it, you're automatically giving yourself extra hurdles to get over. Okay, if I set you the task, what would you do? I've been in UK now for 25 years and God, there is so much to, to, to expose. Right. Stilton has a cheese. Great cheese, one of the best, if it's not the best. Toffee, lemon curd, uh, shortbread, marmalade, smoked fish, I mean, I can go on and on. You've mentioned two out of three of my products. Let's move on to Christina. Now, she really upset you, didn't she? What did, what did she do wrong? I don't I, think she upset me. Well, I think I mean, the she, fact of the matter was, you She know, called it right on the cheese for a start, didn't she? So, what, what got on your nerves so well, much? The thing, is, the, thing with, the thing with Christina is, any decision that was made, she'd immediately criticise it. So the fact that you've got a bit of her criticising the cheese, you know, that's all an isolated instant. And she's done that throughout the show to, to back her, herself up and to give herself an insurance policy. So she always criticised something. Um, and, you know, throughout the task, Christina's playing a very clever political game and trying to draw me into arguments, which I would not be drawn into. And I always said to her, you know, what's her point? And invariably, she didn't really have one. I mean, most people dread going into the boardroom. She was absolutely dying to get into the boardroom. <laughs> well, the, the, yeah, she thrives on con controversy, and, you know, that's what she enjoys. Okay, well, he, is she a spoiling for the fight? I'd be quite happy to, 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 for him to pick me to go against him with Sir Alan in the final three, because I'd nail him. And didn't she enjoy it, though, during the boardroom as well? She was like the, the cat you. that got the cream. Well, she kind of, yes, she, um, well, she, she nailed you, but you kind of were nailed yourself by then. But look, just look at the expression on her face as uh, Sir Alan was weighing into you. We were trying to make the cheapest burner possible. We Why? You spent 700 burner. bloody pounds on all the other toot. You could have gone out for 10 quid anywhere and bought a simple gas camper thing. <laughs> Smog is the word that comes to mind there. What, is she a contender, Christina? I think she plays a clever, clever political game. I'm not sure what else she has to offer, but um, you know she's certainly very good at ensuring herself, as I say, by criticising things earlier on, and then making sure she's got other team members on her side, which she can use should it come to the boardroom. What would you say about Christine? Um, I wouldn't. I, I, I would say maybe she's playing a political game, but I kind of think that's the point. That's how you win, isn't it? Um, but you, you say that she criticises everything. Well, they didn't show that. She just criticised the cheese. She didn't say, "Oh, the chutney's a bad idea," and the chutney did quite well. So, I think throughout that program, she made several sound judgments and if you are a team leader you have to listen to your team whether or not you choose to I, I, I accept th I think you're right and, and the problem I had of it coming from Christina was I wasn't sure if she was trying to stab me in the back or not and, and because she was sort of being so confrontational and obviously playing that game I, I didn't really trust what she was saying half the time. Do you accept at all that you made a strategic mistake? My mistake was the quantities 